All right, let's see who's ready and willing to go. It is week two, match two, as we head to the sunny, beautiful desert of Miramar. Shout out to Intel for making this possible. Let's head over to the perfect pontification of Toby and Paper Thang. <laughs> Thank you very much, Toffees, Clover, and Froz. I thought he could have really gone with the alliteration and put not my name first there. I think you put, screwed the pooch on that one there, Toffees. But whatever. <laughs> we'll get into the game as we have a very southern heavy plane path to start yes. this one out. Toby, are we going to see any shenanigans like we did at the beginning of that first game? One thing's for sure, if you are a team that's opting to go north, there will most likely be teams opting to try and contest your vehicles. But of course, we have seen before plenty of teams opting to go down to the south. And I mean, this plane is so far south that even Face Clan, who normally goes south on these type planes, go, you know what? Nah, we'll just stick up. We'll stay. We'll go back to Monte. No reason to uh, to worry whatsoever. Or maybe they'll stay around the Riera. But this is, I mean, this is an absurdly southern plane. And as we expect, anyway, should also result in a somewhat southern circle. Yeah, we'll see what the circle wants to do to come out with. Senya looking to put more damage into attack all around, was able to get one dink in there as Sia actually goes down to Clib from Team Liquid. That's over southwest of Los Leones. Circle goes even further southwest. Yeah, it, Jayers has no idea. There Pio is go. here. Nope. Pio just lights him up with the M4, makes quick work of Jayers. You can see Pio looking around to see if he's clear. It's going to be Esther, the one to finish the job. A point, I guess. Well, it's not a point because of the settings, but a kill for Genji. Now, Shikari's <laughs> going to take Shandion out. Shandion rolls up here. TSG full sending it into Afrika. Volibear now going to go down as well. It's only Pang left for them. Afrika doing a fantastic job holding this off. They lost one earlier now. They're looking to go out in 16th here. It's going to be a trigger one. Yep, and there you go. Ikaru with an 8 finds Peng. That's all she wrote for Triumphant Song Gaming. And uh, they will fall in 16th. I just love it when you have a pull-up and there's just guy leaning out the car going, hello there. And uh, and down he goes. Speaking <laughs> of pull-up, 4 a.m. and K7. Now pulling up towards Face Clan's position. Good high ground position. It's going to be contested. And first one to fall is going to be 8 C. Yeah, AT taking down as Buyohu watching some angles around the silos. Fuzzface still up on that hill with his mini poking some damage into Buyohu's back. Buyohu going to let go with that grenade. It's got Shaolu and it's going to get the knock very nicely timed by him. Perfectly thrown forever. Gets a little bit of cross damage in and now Locks Lock takes some damage of his own from Crazy. Returns the favor. Gets Crazy down to about half health as this is quite a messy fight. Yeah, it's an issue for both the teams right now. And also, I mean, AC got caught. Oh, my lord, this circle towards the north is going to be. That just makes that position on the hillside even more valuable. And no one's going to be backing off of this. You have Fuzz on the side, not really engaged in the fight just yet. You can see him running with the mini on the back side of your screen. He's going to be making it over, trying to get some sort of info. And if FaZe plays this correctly, even though they lost AC early, they might be in a perfect third-party position here. No damage done with that one. One more lap forward. Orange is the one throwing the nade in there. That one was straight in the face of Fail Frost. He's going to go down. Yeah, really nicely done here. Tab on the side puts Raylo onto his stomach and Snaker is trying to come up over the top. They get a bunch of damage. Besto's trying to help him out as this flank could collapse, but no, it's going to be Orange and Besto getting some knocks. Orange over the top wow. finds the angle, finishes Oath off. They just got over half the kills in this game they had in kills the entire last week. Keep that in mind. I mean, this, this, I, mean I, 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 know, I know it's going to sound rude, but it's also a compliment in saying they're back. If they can go out and take fights like this, that is really, really good for Na'Vi. Sonics, let's see if they can hold off here. Pulling up to 4 a.m. They know they're bruised already. They want to get the res up. They lost two already. It's just one more left alive, though. Lou trying to do the damage needed. He's down to half HP, trying to get him down. There's just one more left alive. But FaZe, come in from behind and take him down. Yeah, it's a great crossfire setup on the entry that Sonics are trying to make, but there's just too many teams around 4 a.m. Now, Savior doesn't even have to do anything because Ibiza finds Shrimzy, and there was already H win down, so Sonics go out in 13th. So Sonics uh, didn't have many great options in front of them, tried to find a timing to fourth party a fight, and now it's going to be FaZe and K7 left up on the side of this hill, but it's in the circle, so this one could uh, kind of... Hmm slow down a little bit, Toby. It could take a little while before this fight has to happen. 
And the issue with the, oh, you say that, but they're gonna have to fight now if they want to get out of here alive because <laughs> the circle just went down the hill and down the hill pretty steep, that's for sure. Now, the only positive in this shift is that you can now start trying to utilize the open spaces in the field below because the majority of the hillsides are excluded. Orange, cold in the open, there's no way in hell he's getting back on his feet. Nice shooting from Esta and Pio to take him down and locks up with the gross up close takedown. Oop, and I was just going to say, I mean, they need to finish this fight on the hillside early because this hillside is good for vision, but you cannot go out and try and get vision if you know there's a team sitting right next to you. So the fact that K7 pushes out and takes down Uber, I'm loving the fact that they dare now. Again, K7, a team that I missed the aggression from last week. Daring to go out, push Uber, get the kill on him. Fuss and, fuss, uh, fuss and Gustav are on their own. You can see Fuss here trying to hold off just 12 more seconds to go until they have to move. And keep in mind, because these two teams have been sitting on top of one another for a while, none of them has really had a good chance to scout down the hill. Gustav is doing it now, but what info have they gotten in the time they've been able to look down? We'll see now. Yeah, Gen G going to make their move at a almost exactly same time as K7. TSM down below them. Now, it isn't the full strength TSM. They did lose Miraku early on. Pio going to rock up in front of them. They're going to fly over with more vehicles Whoa! trying to get those crossfire angles set up on a TSM. And it's going to be Esther finding one. Gets knocked himself. Iroh down as well. Pio going to get knocked from a grenade. Wookie Bookie on the backside taking a whole bunch of damage from Alfaka. Attack all around who's been waiting in the wings. Pulls up on this. It's starts putting in some more damage. A lot of teams going to get knocked. Jake, you finding an Onyx now. Both TSM and Gen.G very beat up. Everyone was waiting for a chance to push down into the hill, and once the hillside was excluded, they all send it at the same time. Chaos consumes everyone. K7 loses two. Here comes two. Now replaced with an OC1. No! Seen and from behind takes out both of them. Oh no, they never saw it. Had they angled that car just a couple inches to the left, they might have been able to run Xenon over without really realizing it. Instead, it's going to be <laughs> Xenon taking them down as they have no hope, but VP, they should be able to clean this up, all four of them popping grenades into him. And it is going to be Zen Noun who goes out to Hyruzen. Mexi's going to find the knock onto him. Now, the thing I was thinking in the back of my head that I never got to mention, Toby, about that Gen G push was I don't think they ever knew that AAA was there. They had no clue. No clue whatsoever. Let's see now. How is this going to fare out? It's not going to fare for, uh, for Faceland, that's for sure. Even though... <laughs> Even though it's the Nation Gaming White that's getting pulled up on, it's actually Liquid doing the damage towards Face Clan trying to pull up on the Shack. There's just, that's what I'm saying. There's really nothing you can play in the center of this circle. As long as the compound's in, as long as the hill is in, the hill got shifted out to the, mo like for the most part. That allowed for some places to be opened, but with Liquid's position still in, it's so damn difficult for anyone in the open to have a place they can call home from where they can do anything but just proning. And well, this circle sure as hell didn't make things any easier. Yes, they've got to be uh, got to be a little. Oh, that nade pretty much landed inside the vehicle. Surprised that Rusty is still alive. Kill though does fall. Gets flushed as well. Once again, Liquid able to do a lot of third partying in that one. Molly thrown in. No damage done, but enough for them to be forced on out. Rusty finds the double. Rasper will fall in return of this. There's only so many places you can play from in this circle, and Fury has one of them. They've got to be a little sad they left that compound and gave it to Liquid. But force has all hindsight. 2021 knowledge. Liquid now shooting over towards infantry who find themselves in between Liquid and Afrika Freaks as well. Yeah, Afrika has a decision to make here. Do they try to do something crazy? Do they try to just push into uh, infantry or Liquid? It looks like right now they're going to pull up, see what inf information they can get onto what infantry is doing. That's going to be the, I would say, easier target for them, no doubt about it. You could kind of try to get underneath the hill that Liquid is at, but until someone is dislodged next to you, you're not going to be able to really hold it for very long. It's one of those hills that is pretty exposed. Now grenades are being traded, damage being done. Akkad getting the knock onto Longsker, and the finish actually comes through to Necro. Doesn't matter too much since wins are all that matter. Who gets that <laughs> point? But it is one down for Afrika in front of them. Stats, bro. Stats, bro. How can stats not matter? <laughs> stats, you know, okay. you, got, you well, gotta get those right, kills, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. That's that's all that matters. Add those stats. Let's see. Fair. <laughs> <laughs> gotta, gotta, gotta have something to show off on Twitter, you know? 
gotta get that damage in there. But of course, it, it, I mean, while it doesn't matter in terms of kills, you do want to get teams as uh, as crumbled down as possible, especially if, you, as you can see now, have to run into them later on in the game. Nine trying to shoot over the top of the head. Of, ooh, that's scary. Bullying. Don't stand up. You will get a bullet to the back of the head. And Hikari falls to an eight. Tried to go down, get himself within an eight distance. But now, falling down. Ikan is up close and maybe within Molly distance. Could do a lot of damage with that, but no, he swans back to the gun. Yeah, Akkad still trying to hold the angle on the side of the smoke, catching infantry, peeking. He's got priority. He gets a very nice headshot, gets the knock onto bullying, starts spraying in there, seeing if he could catch another member or just finish that knock. But for now, infantry is able to find safety behind their vehicle barricade. As now the full push is on. Akkad not able to get, oh, he does get the knock on the nine, but quickly taken down by Zhao Ying. Here comes EJ along the side, just spraying around, desperately looking for Zhao Ying, could never find him in time. Hatsia takes a bunch of damage. <laughs> He's down as well. <laughs> they all end up dying. That's just unfortunate. Now we have a billion cards and a billion crates and no one to take them. Vehicle strolls on by the set violin place and that's an entire southeast side open and Murder's Pro going, well, I guess we don't have to fight a team coming down the hill anyway then because uh, Liquid just did all the damage for us. Look at the spread of kills as well. Yeah, as good as Liquid's compound is, it becomes very dangerous once they have to leave it. You can see there, there's no exactly. cover on the sides of those hills when you have to leave it. So for them to push out at this time, very, very smart. Whoever seems to be in this shack is just getting mollied. VP has that the perfect so angle to it. It's really nicely done here by VP. They find good angles, getting them right into the windows multiple times. And this time they're going to find a finish on the Rusty's era. They threw the first Molly the first time. They saw him jump out of the window. He stayed alive. Second time around, they throw Molly behind the building and one inside. So when he jumps out, he doesn't stay alive. That is an extremely smart play from Virtus Pro in a situation like that. To so see that he jumps out, he stays alive, and then to react on it immediately after. And I'm sure if you're a mech, you would have wanted some of those 290. 762 bullets that Virtus Pro are at least Lewis in position of right now because he ain't gonna be running short of ammo anytime soon. They also have what like nine crates around them, they can loot as much as they please. But they are the team to have to move teams we know is on the off angle position up towards the northwest side. But where oh where does Virtus Pro go from here? This is very, very nasty for Virtus Pro. I mean, I, I, I would think they have quite a bit of smokes as well with all those crates that are hanging around there. So maybe they could get some going in front of them. Maybe you work your way towards Team Liquid. And this is a good push by Batulans. He's going to get up to the rock, claim that for himself. Now the grenades that Team Liquid Ooh. has been able to sit on for some time are going to start to work. But it's actually Necro who gets the knock on Batulans. The grenade started the damage. Necro going to be the one to finish it. Clip, we talked about it earlier, Toby. He's getting bolts, but this time they give him the best one, the AWM, but it doesn't matter. They can just spray down with their assault rifles, just tap away. Oh, this is insane. We talked about how the solos might never win games, but they sure as hell can damage the ones that did have a chance to do so. Had Batulin stayed alive up there, there would have been nothing that Clip and Liquid could do other than pushing him down or try to get a lucky nade in there to get him knocked. But Necro gets the knock on towards him. Sparrow didn't deal with the solo fast enough, and now... This, I mean, this has Liquid written all over it. Yeah, this should be firmly under Liquid control. It's going to take Necro and Spyro just playing the games of their lives to hold on through this. Glib now with that AWM, seeing if he could scope in. Jeem's going to throw that grenade. It's going to get far enough behind and get the finish onto Necro. Perfectly thrown by Jeem's there, finishing off one of the snakes. One left to go. Liquid 4v1. Spiro, we've seen crazy things from you before, but to be able to pull this one up would require nothing short of a miracle. Clip is holding the angle with the 8x arm. Doesn't even care. Just make one move. Get away from that vehicle for a second and you will be dead. Denying points here don't matter either. You have to get the win if you want to do anything. And to be fair, I mean, he's trying to buy himself as much time as possible, but I just do not see how in the universe this should ever be possible. Down to half HP, tacked once by James. Now he's visible again. He's peeking on over, but it ain't gonna matter. Liquid seals the deal, gets the second win. And there you go, 13 kills and a spot in the weekly finals.